Now that we have solved the Rubik's Cube, we are going to move on to the Rubik's Revenge and then the Professor's Cube. I've tried to make as simple of a solution on all of these as I could figure out. Although, often I don't stay faithful to my solution because I often get tempted to do it much faster ways. We will do our corners first. I'm not taking any meaningful moves right now, I'm just basically scrambling it up. We're going to do our corners first, then we're going to do our edges and our middles in three bands. Okay, let's start off with white. Here's two that are already correct. Let's find us a white down here and put him in place with our typical move, just as though we did on the cube. Now we got three out of four whites. We have no edges, no middles, no anything as reference. And let's and the next thing we need to do is determine what is the polar opposite of white. We can pick one of our pieces here and see if any of these other colors show up on a white piece. We have yellow. Well, I found a yellow over here that has white on it, so I know yellow isn't it. Here's orange. Here's a white with orange on it, so I know orange is not my opposite. So it has to be blue. And the only thing I can reference off of is a correctly flipped blue. So here is a blue. That means any blue with red on it is going to go here. And any blue that I find with green on it is going to go there. It's the only thing I have for reference. It has neither blue nor... It has neither green nor red. It's going to go here. So here's one with green and orange. So since it has green on it, and there is green, it's going to go over to here. And our four move sequence that we used on the cube. Now here is blue, red, yellow. We have us red right here, so that one has to go over here since it has red on it. Do our four move sequence. Now we're going to have to... Okay, we've got three out of four on our top place, so we do the same thing we do on the cube. We go through our four move sequence until these back three corners are restored. That restores the back three. And it looks like everything is correctly flipped and in the right place. 50% of the time you will wind up with a white piece up here and the blue piece down here. So I will pause it and get that situation now. Okay, I've forced the situation that we wind up with 50% of the time. When we get our back three corners where they belong it, by repeating our four move sequence, we have a white up here instead of down here. So we can't do as we did on the cube and have these two face us. What happens is this, these pieces don't actually belong here. This piece belongs over here. This piece belongs over here. This piece belongs over here, and the piece that's down here, instead of belonging here, belongs over here. So I am going to go and move them one at a time with my four move sequence. That got that one in place. Since that's on one's facing me, I can use the reverse moves like I did in the second half of my cube video. That one's not facing me. Put it here, a little merry-go-round here. And this being our last corner, we're just going to go till 
these three corners fix themselves. Not that time. Don't have it yet. And it just coincidentally happened to be flipped the right direction when these all fixed themselves. Had this one and this one been flipped, or twisted rather, then you would stick it in front of you and run through that four move sequence to untwist them. I've already shown you how to do that on the cube, so if you're unsure of it, just go find my cube video and watch it. But I'll just recap it. When you get, if this one and this one happen to be twisted, have them face you, run through the four move sequence until this one is correct, go over to here, run through it until this one is correct. 